Hey guys, Dion here with Your Guitar Academy. So in this lesson, we're gonna talk a little bit about the type of gear that you're gonna to need to play this style of music, including guitar, amp, and any effects you might want to use as well. So grab your guitar and let's get going. If you just joined us, don't forget you can head over to the website to grab all the tabs, chord boxes, backing tracks, and anything else you need to do with the course, all completely free. And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button, and leave us a comment and we can have a chat. So let's talk about the guitar first, okay? So ideally, if you've got a guitar with humbucker pickups, that'd be absolutely brilliant, but you can also play this style with single coils as well. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, the thing that you'll notice if you have a guitar with humbuckers is that it sounds a bit kind of bigger, okay? It's just much more kind of, um, yeah, much larger sound, I would say. Um, so the thing about this style is that it, it just, with humbuckers, obviously the clue is in the name. They cancel out hum. So when we're playing with a lot of gain, for instance, in this style of music, that's why humbuckers are really useful as well because it can get quite kind of buzzy and a lot of background noise otherwise. But um, as I say, if you've got a guitar with single coils, you can absolutely play this style as well. Um, so we're mostly gonna be kind of using the bridge pickup, you know, for most of this stuff. So you get that kind of really big, bitey kind of trebly tone in this case, okay? Um, it's nice as well if you're playing solo to have a bridge uh, sorry, a neck humbucker as well, because it's kind of a bit more of a warm, rounded tone. But again, single coils, absolutely fine. Um, in terms of the actual pickup style as well, some people like to use what are called active pickups. So for instance, uh, uh, pickups such as EMG pickups. Active pickups mean that they need to be powered with a battery, and they tend to sound a bit more kind of aggressive and you know crunchier sounding uh, for this style. But again, it's not essential. This guitar doesn't actually have active pickups. They're passive and it still sounds really, really great for this style. Um, cool, so that kind of covers the guitar. Um, on to the next thing, which would be your amp or you know anything that you have to, to generate an amp sound, you know, be it software or you know headphones or whatever. Um, so generally you're gonna want to use either an actual amp or a model of an amp that's kind of a what's considered to be a, a high gain amp. So some names, you know, for instance, PV5150 or 6505 is the other name for it. Um, or, you know, Mesa Dual Rectifier, any of these kind of high watt, high gain amps, really, really perfect for this style. If you haven't got that, it's absolutely fine. So it's a lot of it is about the amount of gain that you dial in. So the thing about gain is that you want to air on the side of caution with it. So you don't want to turn it right up to 10 because things can start to get really muddy and you can lose quite a bit of clarity. So I like to run my amps in this sort of style, my, my gain, sorry, in this style, around about noon or just before noon. And I find that that's just enough to make it chunky and big sounding, but it's also enough to maintain clarity because as I say, when you turn that gain right up, it starts to get a bit muddy. Um, in terms of EQ, a lot of people like to scoop out some of the mid-range. So that would mean to totally back off on the mid-range. That's really common in the kind of old thrash styles bands such as Metallica. Um, and then you up the bass and up the treble to probably around one, two o'clock. Um, for me personally, I actually really like to retain mid-range in my tone because the guitar is a mid-range instrument. So you can get a bit lost if you take out too many of the mids, but thing to remember, it's all subjective. So if you like that sound, you know, absolutely go for it. Um, so yeah, that kind of covers the amp side of things. In terms of effects as well, so really, really common thing for this kind of precise metal riffing style is to use a noise gate. So a noise gate essentially helps to cut out any of the, that kind of feedback or any of the noise in between, you know, in those moments of silence with riffs, you know, for instance. <laughs> You know, you hear each, you know, there's lots of gaps of silence in between that. Um, and that's what a, a noise gate can be really, really useful for, because otherwise you can get a bit of feedback and stuff in between. 
Um, and also, I really like running a, you know, some sort of overdrive pedal into the front of the amp, just set really low, you know, like a tube screamer, for instance. Because what that does is it just drives the amp a little bit harder and it makes, it just tightens things up a little bit and it saturates it a little bit and it just makes things, you know, feel a bit nicer when I'm playing it. It's, it's a subtle kind of change, but it's maybe something you want to try. Um, other than that, in terms of other effects, say you're playing, you know, a solo in this style, you might want to use a touch of delay. Uh, but again, I like to use it quite subtly. Um, and in terms of reverb as well for this style, if I'm playing really tight riffs like that, I don't want too much reverb again, because it's, a lot of it is about that silence in between the notes, which is what we're going for. Um, so that pretty much covers it. As I say, it's a fairly simple setup. You're not going to need too many different things. But if you haven't, for instance, if you're running a really clean amp, you can get some uh, really great metal tones using pedals nowadays as well. There's a really, really good one uh, by MXR. It's actually the Eddie Van Halen signature pedal called 5150. And that's great for just putting in front of a clean amp and dialing in this sort of sound. It's very amp-like feel to it. Um, so yeah, I would say don't get too bogged down with it. It's all subjective. Find a tone that really, really suits you and that you really like using these tips and I'll see you in the next lesson. So that's it for this lesson. So if you want to head back to the beginning of the course, you can click here. And if you want to go on to the next lesson, you can click here. So leave us a comment guys and we'll get back to all of your questions. We absolutely love hearing your feedback. It really helps us out.